In this video, you will see how to use React Error Boundary to correctly handle runtime errors generated by your application. So I have this application that displays a list of courses and also an individual course details page. We have created this application in this link video. So as you might know, when you deploy your React application to production, runtime error might occur any time in your application for some edge case that you might not have handled, and your application will break. And when there is some error during rendering, React will display a blank page instead of an error message. So here, in the course details component, I'm checking if the course URL in the browser matches with the URL available in the list of courses. So when I go to details page, I have the corresponding URL displayed in the browser. And I'm checking if that URL matches with any of the course in this course's array. If we find a match, the find method will return that course which we store in the selected course variable. And if there is no matching course, we will redirect the user to the home page. So let's say, I add some extra S's at the end of the URL, then as you can see, we're redirected to the home page. But let's say I don't have this condition. And I'm also not assigning empty object as fallback. So now, if there is no course with the matching URL, then find will return undefined. And then we're destructuring properties from undefined. So when you destructure properties from undefined, JavaScript will throw an error. To see that in action, let me open the dev tools and the course details page. If I type some extra characters, you can see the page is broken and so nothing is getting displayed on the screen. Because we have an error of not being able to destructure properties of undefined. And this is a very common scenario when you have a large application and it can happen anytime in your application. And getting blank page is not a good user experience as the end user will not know what happened and what to do in such situations. To handle such scenarios, we can use a very popular NPM library, React Error Boundary. So let's install this package now. Using yarn add React Error Boundary. You can also use npm install React Error Boundary if you want. Once we have it installed, we can wrap our entire application in Error Boundary component. So we can wrap this app component inside the Error Boundary component. And we import the Error Boundary component from the React Error Boundary. This error boundary component accepts a fallback prop where we can display an error message when there is some error. Now you can see, we're getting this error message instead of the blank screen. But displaying just a message does not look good. So we can use the fallback component prop instead of just fallback prop. As a value for this prop, we can pass either a class component or a functional component. I have already created this error page component to display an image with a message and a button. So we can just reference that component as a value for fallback component prop. So now you can see a nice error page with a message and a button. So this page will be displayed only when there is a blank page because of some JavaScript error, which is a great improvement. Now let me go to another course details page and I add some extra characters in the URL. You can see we get the error page. If you want to access that actual error message, then we can use the error prop, which is automatically sent to the fallback component. For now, I will just log it to the console. And if I refresh the page, you can see our log is printed in the console. Also, in addition to the fallback component, we can also provide onReset function prop. Inside this function, we can redirect the user to the home page. So here, 
I will just use location.href equal to slash to redirect to application home page. Now to call this function, inside the error page component, we can use the reset error boundary function prop. Now on click of the button, we can call the reset error boundary function. Calling reset error boundary function resets the errors, and it will execute the code we added in the onReset function, where we're just redirecting user to the home page. Let's verify that now. So if I click on the refresh page button, you can see we're redirected to the home page, and also all the errors in the console are gone. So adding error boundary to your application is very important to avoid breaking your application on production. So that's it about this video. If you found this video useful, do like it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.